While discussing about the zero ETL capabilities of Redshift, we discussed about the Redshift supporting auto copy feature with S3, which automates the data ingestion from S3 into Redshift. In this section, we will be exploring S3 auto copy feature more in detail. We already know that we can use the copy command to copy the data present in S3 to the Redshift tables. With S3 auto copy feature, you can automate the copying of data. You can completely get rid of your manual task or your custom automation mechanisms if you have built any. To make it work, you need to define a copy job inside Redshift. This will contain the copy command specifying the S3 bucket. Though you can define this in both manual and auto mode, the auto mode makes the Redshift to capture the S3 events. As soon as the file is added to the bucket, it's going to trigger the copy command and populate the database for you. And this process is going to repeat for every file being added to the S3 bucket. Here is the sample command for it. We are using the usual copy command where the source is the S3 location and the target is the database table inside your Redshift. We are defining the IAM role for authorization. This is where typically the copy command ends. With the copy job, we are adding additional commands here. We are using job create and specifying the job name along with it. This will ensure that the copy job is created in the Redshift system. Additionally, by specifying auto on, we are enabling the auto mode with the copy job. You can manage the copy jobs with the help of create, list, show, drop, alter, and run commands. You can monitor the copy jobs with the help of system tables, including the STL load errors, STL load commits, sysload history and sysload error detail. The new table which has been introduced with this feature is the sys copy job which stores the copy job information. In this demonstration, we are going to create and validate a sample autocopy job. We will start with creating the Redshift cluster in the preview mode. We will ensure we have the S3 bucket and the folder as the source location. Then we are going to create the database table as the target. For this, we will be creating the table representing the sales data present in the sample ticket DB. Once the prerequisites are met, we are going to create the copy job, which is going to read the data from source and write it to the target sales table. Once it's ready, we will be validating it. In this section, we will be creating a Redshift provision cluster in preview mode. We are at the AWS console and I'm logged in as admin Redshift, which has the required permissions to carry out the operations. We are currently looking at the Amazon Redshift provisioned clusters dashboard. As you know, the S3 autocopy feature is currently available with preview cluster only. We are going to create the cluster in the preview mode. For this, do not click here, but click on the top, which already says that create preview cluster, where you can try the features which are in the preview mode. I'm going to click on it. And this will take me to the create preview cluster page. I'll give it a name. As you can see, the warning is present here, which says the cluster is being created in preview and the production use is not supported here. In this section, we have to choose the preview track, which is 2023. So I'm going to click on it. For the size of the cluster, I'm going to choose DC2 large. I'll choose the number of nodes as two. In this case, I don't need to load the sample data. So I'll skip this selection. For the database admin username, I'm fine with AWS user. So I'll stick with this. For the password, I'll go with the automatically generated password option. So I'll click here. For the S3 autocopy feature to work, our associated IAM role must have the permissions to access the S3 data. So I'm going to select the appropriate role for it. I'm going to click associate IAM role for it. And you can see I have two IAM roles currently present, which I can associate with Redshift. The first one is the AWS service role for Redshift which is the default service role for Redshift. I've created a new role, which I am calling it as Redshift loading S3 data role. 
as the name suggests, it has the required permissions to access the S3 data. As you can see, I'm using the managed policy of Amazon S3 read-only access. It has the required permissions to access the S3 objects. So I'm going to select both these roles and associate with our Redshift cluster. I'm going to create the Redshift cluster in my default VPC, so I'm not making any changes here. I'll just select the Use Defaults option and click on Create Cluster here. The create process has already started, so let's wait for this to finish. As you can see, the cluster has been created now. Here is the cluster name we provided, and if you can see under the cluster configuration, this is in the preview mode. As S3 data is going to serve as the source data for the copy command, I've created a bucket, QTB Redshift data inside AWS S3. I'm going to create a new folder inside this bucket. I'll call it autocopy and click on create folder. This will serve as the source location for the copy command. We are in the cluster we just created. I'm going to click on the query editor V2 as we will be creating the copy job with the help of query editor. On the left hand side, you can see our demo auto copy cluster is visible. I'm going to create a connection here. I'll use the temporary credentials using the database username, which is the AWS user. Click on create connection. And the connection is successfully created. If you see on the left hand side, the default database dev is present. In the public schema, currently there are no tables. For the demonstration, we are going to create the sales table as the target database for the copy job. The table here represents the sales data present inside the sample ticket data set, which Redshift provides. I'm going to run the create table command here. And this is successfully created. Let's refresh on the left hand side. And we can see the table count is one. If I further drill it down, you can see the sales table is now visible. And this is the copy job command. We already discussed it. With the copy command, the sales table is going to be the target database for us. And the source is going to be the S3 bucket, which we already created. Additionally, I'm adding the prefix as sales, which means any file with a sales prefix is uploaded at this location. This should trigger the S3 autocopy job for us. For the IAM role, I'm picking up the Redshift loading S3 data role, which we already created and associated with our Redshift cluster. The delimiter I'm putting as tab, the time format I'm setting here, and the region I'm setting as US East 2. So this is the end of the standard copy command. Additionally, I'm adding two subcommands, job create, and this is the job name for us, test autocopy sales job. As we discussed earlier, we have to turn on the auto mode so that it can capture the S3 events directly, which I'm setting with auto on. That's it, let's select this and run the command. And our copy job is successfully created. This is the system table, says copy job. If I see the data inside this table, there is one job which is created. As you can see, it has automatically provided the job ID, the job name we already provided. Here is the data source, and here is the IAM role associated with this job. Before getting into the validation of the copy job, let's confirm there are no records present in the sales table. So I'm going to run the select count from sales and you can see the current count is zero. Here is the sample data for us. This is the sales table. As you can see, the data is representing the sales records. The total number of records here are 60,000. 
So this is part of the data set which the ticket sample database already provides to us. I have split the data into three different files. The idea here is to generate the S3 event multiple times and see how the autocopy works and populates the data for us. So this is the first set of records. Let me just open the sales2.txt which is which contains records from 60,000. This is again like 60,000 records in this particular file. And this is the sales3 which has the remaining set of records. So it has roughly around 52,000 records and all together it constitutes the complete data set provided by TicketDB for the sales table. So we will be uploading these files one by one and see how the autocopy is ensuring the data is populated for us. So we are at the S3 console now and we are at the location which we have defined as the source for the copy job. I'm going to upload the very first file here with sales1.txt. Let's click on upload. And the upload is successful here. We can see the sales1.txt file here. Let's go to the query editor. I'm going to get the job ID so that I can see the progress of it. It's 106454. In this query, we are going to query the STL load commits along with the sys copy job to get the job details. Let me click on run. And we can see for this job ID, we can see the status as one, which means our data should be uploaded. So let's go and check it out. I'm going to run the query, which gets the count from the sales table. And we can see it has correctly populated the records which were present in the sales1.txt file. Now I'm going to upload the sales2.txt to the S3 bucket. This should upload another 60,000 records for us. And the upload is successful. Now we can see the count in the sales table is close to 120,000 records, which is as expected. And if you see the sys load history, you can see two entries here. For both the loads, the sales table has been the target database. And in the first one, it shows 59,000. The second one, it shows the 60,000 records present here. If we run our query to check the job status, you can see there are two entries present here. And each of them for the same, for the same job ID. And for, for both the entries, we can see the status as one, which indicates that it's successfully loaded again. Similarly, I've uploaded the sales3.txt file as well. And we can see in the sales table that the total count is now 172,456 records, which is the total number of records present across all the sales files, which we uploaded to the S3 bucket. If we check the system load commits table, you can see there are three different entries present and each of the entry representing the separate load. The first one is the sales one, the second corresponds to the sales two dot text, and the third corresponds to the sales three dot text file. With this, we have successfully validated the S3 autocopy feature, which can really help in data present in the S3 buckets to automatically load it to the Redshift database.